they love the Bible and it's the greatest book and they swear on it, but it has these things that are like comically stupid. I don't know how I missed this podcast until now. It's Jordan Peterson on Bill Maher's Club Random Podcast. I have to say, I've actually met Bill Maher and he's actually a nice guy in person, but he's obviously also one of the most infamous mockers of Christianity. I like the direction that this conversation goes and the reason I'm featuring it here is because I think that there's something inside of Jordan Peterson's tone approach and continued earnestness in the face of someone mocking you that is noteworthy. Also, the actual implications and things that he unpacks within the text I think is cool as well. It's Jordan Peterson. It's Bill Maher on Club Random Podcast. Let's do it. They love the Bible and it's the greatest book and they swear on it, but it has these things that are like comically stupid and and corrupt. I mean, God is so corrupt in the Bible. I mean, you can bargain, <laughs> you can bargain humans, you know, he does things that are, are so capricious and cruel and, you know, petty I mean, he's very Trumpian. Well, you know. I've been I've been walking. I released a series on started to release it yesterday on YouTube on on the story of Exodus, and it's a sixteen part series, thirty two hours on wow. the book of Exodus. Yeah, I had nine people come down, and I've been I've been walking through the biblical corpus. That was actually something I wanted to talk to you today about. I today. love it. Yeah, well, I love it that you're a real professor. So, you're like a personality and a TV guy and like a great voice, but you're the real deal. You're an academic. So th there is a there, there there's a very interesting idea that lurks behind the notion that you can establish a covenant with God, and the and you can tell me what you make of this. It's like the it's a reflection of the fact that human beings bargain with fate all the time. We bargain with the future all the time. So, so, and here's how we do it. So, and this is what you teach your kids. You teach your kids that if you forego immediate gratification, so you give it up, sacrifice it, because that's a sacrifice, that the future will be better as a consequence. And well, that's, will. okay, it's a and contractual relate. Well, that's and what's and trying, but right, that's the thing that's so interesting, is that it actually will. If you don't have that piece of cake tonight, yeah. you'll be healthier tomorrow. Right, right. And if you if you if you if you don't go off and play with your friends immediately after school, but you know, play the piano for 20 minutes, then right. in, in in 10 years when you're actually a musician, all sorts right. of opera. Okay. So so but but it's see this is something that's very uniquely human because human beings have learned that if we give up, there are certain forms of immediate gratification. If we give them up, which means we offer them up, it's a sacrificial offering, then we can make a covenant, a bargain with the future, right. right? That's what's being reflected in those stories where the notion is that you can bargain with God. Well, I mean, the Bible is so well known, even by people who haven't read it. And by the way, a lot of the people who put their hand on it and love it so much have never read it. Certainly not all the way through. It's a big, long book. Yes, it, it is. It's, and it's, it's, you know, full of most mostly nonsense. Once in a while, it stumbles upon wisdom. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's, uh, but uh, come on, you, you got to, give these people their due. They, I mean, it was written as, first of all, it's an anthology. I'm, I'm going to tell you a story. Okay. A you Bible story? Tell me story? what you think about a Bible story. <laughs> this, is, this is Jordan Peterson's Bible I love your Bible, Bible story. <laughs> okay, this is a Bible story. So I'm, um, I've been looking at the story of Jonah. Yeah. And this is a story that you'll appreciate. So here's what happens to Jonah. He's just minding his own business. And then he, the voice of God comes to him, and, it's, and the, vo the voice says, you have to go to this city, Nineveh, because everybody in Nineveh is like, they've strayed off the path, and I'm thinking about wiping them out. But you could maybe go there and tell them like how foolish they are, and they'll straighten up, and then I won't have to destroy the city. And, jo and, and Jonah thinks, there's no damn way I'm going to do that. First of all, Nineveh is a city of his enemies. Babylonia. It's, it's, it, it's, it's a city that he's, right. not, he's not allied with. And so he thinks, right. well, you guys can go to hell in a handbasket, and if God wipes you out, that's perfectly fine with me. Right. And then sure. he also thinks, like any wise man would, it's like... I see, this is the task you have for me. It's like, <laughs> there's 150,000 people there. I'm a foreigner. I'm going to go there and tell them how they're misbehaving, <laughs> and that's going to work out well for me. <laughs> so he thinks to hell with that, <laughs> like any sensible person would. And he doesn't say what he has to say, right? So then he hops on a boat, and he gets the hell out of there. Well, it turns out that God's not very happy if you're informed that you have something to say, and then you don't say it. So the storms come and the waves rise and now the ship's uh, in danger. Okay, so what does that mean? got in the whale. It, it, yes, that's right. 
It means that if you don't say what you have to say when you're called upon to say it, you'll put the whole damn ship at risk. Now, the soldiers figure this out, or the sailors, they figure out, oh, there must be someone on the boat that like, isn't right with God, and that's why we're in danger of being swamped. So they will go and ask everybody, and Jonah, to his credit, says, yeah, it's me. You know, I, I had the voice of conscience made itself manifest to me. I had a task to do. I refused it. I'm screwing things up. And the sailors actually try to save him, but it doesn't work, so they throw him overboard. Now you think, okay, Jonah's got what he deserves because he shut the hell up when he had something to say, and now he's going to die. And you think, that's pretty damn rough. And partly what that means is, if you hold your tongue when you have something to say, then you're going to put the ship at risk, and you'll be lucky if you don't die. All right, but that's not enough. That's not nearly enough, because that isn't all that happens if you don't say what you're called upon to say. So the next thing that happens is Jonah's drowning away. That's about as bad as it gets. And then this creature from hell itself comes up from the bottom of the abyss and <laughs> takes him down. And so now he's in hell for three days. And so that's the next part of the story, which is that if you're called oh. upon to say what you have to say and you refuse it, like you'll end up in a place where you wish Wait, you were dead. Wait, not the whale? Yeah, it's the whale. Oh, okay. It, because... But it's the same thing. Like that... In well, the story, the whale is described as hell. It's I exactly the same idea. In Religious, the guy who was arguing with me, and he said, uh, he was very, this point was very important to him. He said, the Bible does not say whale. It says big fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, now it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's the thing, well, what it is, it's a, it's a representation of the thing that dwells but in the you, dark. It's so interesting that you see the lessons in these that I just always read these things as like super fucking stupid from the Bronze Age, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously they were telling people something. I mean, whoever wrote this was, had a, a message in mind. Well, they were trying to, fit. look, they were trying to figure out by telling stories how the state itself got corrupted. And this is one of those stories. So the story is, here's how the state gets corrupted. You're called upon to tell your fellow man, enemy or not, when they're not behaving properly. When your conscience tells you to do that, you're called upon to do that. If you don't do that, the whole ship will start to rock. But do you think the ancients who were reading this at the time, and they read the story about the, the he gets swallowed by the big fish yeah. or the whale, well, you think they got this message? They were like, yeah, but what this really means is when you're called upon, excuse me, I'm talking, when you're called upon, then you step up and do it. No, or no, do you I think... would say it's a step and it's a, it's a, it's a dreamlike step in the developing of understanding. Mm -hmm. So before you fully understand something, you can represent it in a story. Right? It's kind of halfway. A yeah, kid no, will start not... to understand something by acting it out. They may. Me? I mean, they may have gotten it or they may have gotten it on an unconscious level. Right? They got it at an implicit level, on which an is what you, level. yeah, well, right. that's what okay. you get when you watch a story, is you get it at an right. implicit level, and it's actually very powerful, right? I mean, when people go to movies, most of the time, most people, when they go to movies, don't sit around afterwards and discuss what the movie meant. They just enjoy the, they just enjoy the story. Right. But that doesn't mean they didn't learn anything. It right. just means they don't reflect on what they learned. Now, these, the, the people who came up with these stories, they were telling the stories because the stories were really interesting. But the question, there's a deeper question is, well, why, why the hell was that story interesting? And why was it remembered? And so what happens to Jonah is that he's in the whale for three days. And then he thinks, I, now I'm in hell. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repent of my inadequacy. I'm willing to say what I have to say. So the whale spits him up on the beach. Then he goes to Nineveh and he tells everybody oh. what the hell they're doing wrong and god decides to spare the city and so for me this story oh, encapsulates the win -win. it's it's well it's a little hard on jonah you know well, well, he the whole hell thing he does he he lived, that's right he it was a did he, did he relocate did he relocate to nineveh no no it, it's just a pilgrimage to nineveh oh okay so yeah. he did go, okay but he goes there and then right. then the city is in fact saved but but it's perfect bill because what it shows and and i know you know this because you wouldn't speak the way you speak. And this is true of comedians in general. You know that you have a moral obligation, like a deep and profound moral obligation. I do. To say what you have to say. I do really respect Jordan Peterson staying earnest in the midst of someone mocking you and the thing that you're trying to communicate to them, to your face. He, ne he never takes the bait and engages in sort of this Let's, you know, mock each other back and forth. He keeps it classy where Bill Maher does not. But really, 
this idea that Bill Maher is clearly uh, consumed with is basically what C.S. Lewis calls chronological snobbery. It's the idea that if something is ancient, it must be foolish. That if something was, you know, a, a Bronze Age, uh, you know, if it came out of the Bronze Age, then it must be as stupid as the technology that came out of the Bronze Age. Obviously, this approach is fallacious at a number of different levels, but I want to kind of pivot now in this video to a snippet of a conversation that I recently had with Peter J. Williams of Tyndale House, and he also, you know, you might recognize him from the Unbelievable podcast. He had a debate a few years back with Bart Ehrman. He answered a question that I asked him about people just like Bill Maher with this type of tone around the Bible and how we should respond to people who want to just dismiss the entire Bible with, with the wave of a hand. I thought that his response here was actually sort of helpful. So this full podcast is going to be coming out in the near future, but here is a small snippet that I hope will help us land the plane of this video. Enjoy. On the internet, there's, you know, different conspiracy theories and myths and things that emerge that people basically buy into and live out of. And mm -hmm. so for someone who would kind of say, yeah, that's essentially what the Bible is on mass is it's like this sort of supernaturally supercharged history that, you know, is appealing because it gives some, you know, broad uh, explanations of life on this planet. And it has these like sort of, you know, Marvel-esque elements to it that appeal to people. And so that explains everything. What, why, or how, how would you respond to that type of uh, Yeah, objection? so I want to know um, what sort of person is saying this. So um, you can get a very lazy thinker version of that. So the person doesn't even bother picking up the Bible. I mean, the Bible takes about 70 hours to read. It's not that long. Um, so, uh, and they're just sort of like folding their arms and say, well, you go and do some work. And with that person, I just say, oh, no, I I'm too busy. I'm not going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, as in, uh, if you want to stay in your ignorance, just just do, um, you know, I mean, there might be consequences for that, like if you find out you're wrong. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think the sort of lazy version, well, it all could have just made up. I haven't read any of it. That is, um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't uh, engage too far. I mean, I, I do think that, again, Jesus set an example in terms of uh, uh, telling people not to engage if people are are not um uh sh showing any interest even talk about disciples um uh, shaking dust off their feet when they leave particular places so i i would say no no I, I want someone to be serious i am really happy to put in time into a serious conversation i expect someone else to put in time as well that's mm -hmm. how humans should work together and be transformed now um if someone's uh more serious and they're looking at uh, the great thing is we can talk detail um and so mm -hmm. i mean i don't know which details we talk about it depends which they want to take that.